Good morning. Good morning. All right, you all. So we are going to be going on air. We still got about 30 seconds before we go on air. Thank you all so much for joining me this morning. <coughs> uh, good morning to everyone on Facebook. I hope you all are doing well. Forgive me for the sinus drainage. Oh, it's <coughs> predictable. I don't, I don't forgive people on radio. So. Uh huh. Yeah, but that number I put in there, I was, it didn't work. Uh, at least on my uh, Zoom on my on my computer there. So that's why, and it oh. kept kicking the, the number out. So oh. this, yeah, that was the first time I tried it with uh, on on that computer there. So we just went to okay. the old old reliable phone. Old All right, here we go. Good morning, everyone, and happy Wednesday to you. I hope that you're having a great start to your day. You tune in to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. So today is our pre-Juneteenth kickoff, and I have with me some special guests, Dr. Charles Coleman, who is a city council member for the city of Jonesboro, and we have Reverend Glenn Cunley, who is the pastor of Miller's Temple Kojic here in Jonesboro, Arkansas. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining me. This morning, how are you doing? Doing wonderful, bless. Doing, doing good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to just say thank you for joining me. And today we're going to be talking about legacy building. The overall theme for Juneteenth this year is preparation is the key to survival. And that can take on a big, you know, that can cover a, a variety of things. And so for this conversation in particular, we know that we have a generation of people that are coming behind us. Um, and I'm even a different generation from you gentlemen. And so there's still people coming behind me that I'm responsible for, for teaching them something, for leaving them some tools and uh, things for them to grow and build for generations to come. But I ask you all here to share your wisdom and your knowledge, um, however you want to come. Just don't get us kicked off here, Reverend Coach, Dr. Coach. <laughs> Well, you know, it, 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 it's a great subject, Cabela, but here's, here's my, as I use the term, my productive thoughts. Uh, I remember uh, way before I got in church, church was church, as I call it, as a young man, you know, uh, went to church, we had a good time, but we were talked to all the time, not every other day. But we were talked about our future uh, from the teachers onto the church. And it was just like a 360 degree circle. That has stopped. And, and that's, that's frightening to me. So most of us don't know even part of our family history. I was kind of discussing with you before we got on air that my, my aunt, which is my mother's sister, uh, my parents didn't raise me, but I kept in contact with my aunt. And she, she has written down the total history from the number we came off the ship in and to wow. all, I'm serious, all the uh, uh, wow. affidavits. Uh, I have a book that I keep. Uh, she's asked me to pass it on to the rest of my relatives. And I'm proud of that, but at the same time, uh, repeating myself before, you know, sometime I, but as a young man, I didn't really know who I was because my, my background is so diversified. But one thing I do love, and I've prayed about this before, that thank God he made me a black man. I am so <laughs> happy to be a black man. And if I would ask God to come back and ask me to make me again, I'd love to be a black man. <laughs> I, 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 I like that. I don't want to be nothing else. I don't want to be white. I don't want to be polka dot. I don't want to be green. I love being a black man. <laughs> because uh, being a black man, I, I have fun. You know, God has made us so, he's made us so perfect that we can't, we can't understand ourselves sometimes, <laughs> you know, but back in the day, they talked about our past, our present, and most of the people in, at my age are still kind of talk about it, but in the body of Christ, it seemed like we've forgotten that, you know, when we had big, uh, const, uh, we had big meetings and had all the groceries on the table outside, you didn't have to. I don't know why there wasn't no flies around, but well, we, we had big time, you know, I call it big time parties, all the ham, black eyed peach, cornbread, turkey, you know, the whole nine yards, macaroni and cheese, good stuff, you know, that folks have to go to the store and buy now. 
you know, them folks made it and they talked about our history and talked about where we should be and who we gonna be. So what they actually did, they helped me survive who I am now because I couldn't survive if I didn't know that we actually came from kings and queens, but in a more important state, we actually came from Jesus. And that's more important to me than anything right now in my lifetime. So I don't know, uh, Reverend Connie, uh, I'm sure you I, had. I, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm a little bit like you, uh, uh, Dr. Coleman. Uh, I grew up in a family that was uh, uh, rich in heritage and, um, that knew uh, about, uh, at least on my mother's side, knew about our past and, and, and uh, we were taught uh, to uh, number one, love God, uh, love your neighbor, uh, love your, uh, honor, honor your parents, honor your children, uh, and, and just honor family. Family was so vital, uh, 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 connected in our, in my life. And, uh, and and Dr. Coleman, as you said, and I um, and I I look back and I see now what I see different is that uh, family, church, and school uh, uh, was was interconnected. Yeah. When I when I say that is, uh, uh, you you went to church with some time with your teachers. Absolutely. And and, it, and and the old saying it takes a village to raise a family, uh, raise a child. And that's, that's what I grew up in. Uh, you know, I could be four blocks from the house. And if I do something wrong, uh, uh, they would not uh, call my, yeah, they would not call my parents. Well, they would call my parents. They only call them after they discipline me. And, yeah. and yeah. And so that's, that's the thing about it was. And, and, and it took the village there to raise that child. And when you raise that child, uh, many times you saw your same uh, 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 neighbors, you saw them in church or, or either going to church. And church was a, a vital part of our, our, our lives. And, and well, what's that? God and education was together. Well, I didn't uh, go to church, Brother Stan. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. you know uh, Brother, I, I, was, I was a hoodlum all my life. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Only with the church with the girls. Uh, I'm just being honest with you. Yes, sir. Okay. So it yes, took sir. Long, it took but that was why, time. you know, and it I think a long that's time to get there. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That was kind of helped me and, and what I saw grow up in our in our neighborhood was uh we saw uh God in church and and God in the school room and and family and neighborhood uh was closely knitted together. And, and, and it was about helping one another uh, to uh, grow and learn. So like you said, my, you know, uh, my teachers, uh, some of my teachers didn't go to our church, but we, when we visited the other churches there, uh, you saw the teachers there. So the, it was kind of integrated in that. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's what I saw in, in uh, uh, my upbringing. And and I see there there a disconnection now. Uh, we we separated church yeah. from school, and now uh, and now when you take God out of school, uh, boy, you take the the most vital part. Uh, you know, I remember every morning we did in school we did we did the pledge we did prayer, scripture, and pledge allegiance to the flag. Uh, <laughs> But can, and, I, can I, can I yes, ask you just a minute? Uh, I, I understand part of what you're saying, mm -hmm. but even though I, I went to church for the wrong reason, uh, <laughs> I did go, I did learn a lot of things, but I think the biggest part is not so much they took the church out of school, they took it out of the house. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, even though I didn't actually go to a church on what a permanent basis, like maybe you and other people, and I'm not putting anybody down, by the way, but yeah. we had church at home. Yeah, yeah, you know, we yeah. talked. It was talked about God at home. So about yes, time sir. After school, whether yeah. they when they said a pledge or not, we know to do right or wrong. And then they had a telegraph without the telephone and without <laughs> the phone. I mean, if you if you got chest ties in school, and by yes, time sir. you got the five six people that 
was your mother and father. Uh, I think I had probably a hundred mamas and daddies, even though I didn't have a real mom and daddy. I got hooked a hundred times before I got even to my grandmother's house. You know, because <laughs> they did this. And I'm saying, you know, what's wrong with these crazy folks? You know, but now I understand. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And 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 that's where I I I I, I talk to, uh, think it's so important. You and you're saying it too. Is that uh, we had that you had that connection there and family and God in school and, and the home as you, and, and certainly, certainly in my home, I know that, of course, I, my father was a pastor and, uh, uh, and my grandmother and my grandfather, actually the, uh, our, uh, uh, the church that our church started actually in my grandmother's home and uh, in 1921, uh, 1920, I'm sorry. And so, uh, and I, we still have the table there. So uh, that's the deep roots I have and what I remember in and what I see is, and now uh, there seems to be a, uh, uh, a loss of connection between family. Uh, you don't see family uh, oriented, uh, orientation and, 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 and the heritage. Oh, I have a brother-in-law he knows he really helped us with our history. I think it, uh, like you say, you don't know, you don't know who you are. You, you're searching and looking forward to looking for something when you're uh, looking for at first of all, find who I am. I? And if you don't know who you are, then how can you, uh, how can you really, uh, you know, make, feel that sense of confidence in who we who you are and move forward. And so my, my parents uh, instilled within us as to who we are, and and first, like you say, we're first uh, we're first born of God. You know, God created us, and then it talked about uh, my mother especially talked about her heritage, and uh, her her mother and her grandmother, and her and and so this is something that I believe that is is now missing in uh, uh, society, especially in the African American community. My first disconnect was, uh, I'll never forget it. Uh, I just got in church, just come off the streets. And uh, I remember uh, I was a young lady that I, that's when I first saw the disconnect, Cabela, that you kind of brought up a few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. girl, she was a bad little girl. I mean, she was awesome bad, not some good bad. She was awesome bad. And she did something, and I tried to talk to the young lady. And uh, mother come and jump me and said, oh, she talk to my daughter like this. All I was telling young girls was, please don't stop telling lies like that. She said, oh, no, th that's not a lie. That That's just a, a misbehavior statement. Oh, mm -hmm. what? You know, uh, only, <laughs> a lie is a lie. You call it like it is. You know, bottom line. So I knew, I thought there's something. Then I said, man, there's something wrong. And I almost got out of church because of that. Because wow. I, if, you, if, you, if I wasn't in church and then I got in church to try to be a better person, and I'm seeing the, the Christians acting like the people out on the streets. Uh, I yeah. remember the first church meeting I went to. The pastor's wife hit a lady in the head with a shoe. You know, I mean, he had a fight at church meeting. And I said, <laughs> my God, I said, you know, things have changed from when I was a kid, not being funny, because I went to church with my grandmother. It was so nice, kind of like Brother Colin was saying. But then all of a sudden, you know, I've been out of church that long and many years, and I go to church, and I'm saying these people act just like the folks out on the street. So now it's the same people that party on Saturday, the same folks that party on Sunday, you know, bottom line. So, you know, it's, 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 really, it's, it's really a strange uh, phenomenon now. Uh, I do grieve in my spirit uh, because I think that the children are not getting what we got, uh, the children uh, are not getting what uh, me being a radical, and, uh, I guess because it was a heritage thing, my dad was a radical. I mean, the chief police told me one time, just don't be like your daddy. You know, because he, 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 you know, he stayed in jail all the time, and I was on my own. So it, it didn't matter. But we still had discipline. We still had respect. Uh, as old as I am, I still say yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am, to anybody. Yeah, right? I do the same. Folks died in the green. Yes, sir. Now, it's huh. Yeah, uh, I hear children talking back to their parents, and I can't handle it right now. I, I see people when I see children talking about parents, I have to go. I have to get out of there because I'm scared I'm gonna get unruly and then go to jail for hitting somebody else's child or their mom. And more or less, not hitting the child, it's hitting the mom and dad upside their head because you didn't 
you let your dog talk to you like that and you feeding that sucker? No way. <laughs> I have a question oh, for you, for yeah. you gentlemen. I was watching, first I want to say good morning to the people that are watching. Karen met McKinney and Derek Hogan. Thank you for checking in. Um, Karen says, amen, God, before anything, first God, then he will restore us. But I have a question. I was watching an old clip of when the buses first got segregated. Y'all can help me with the year, 1960 something, maybe. Um, and so they were, this reporter was talking to a group of kids, white kids and black kids. And so the kids were speaking so intelligently as if we knew the grownups had to be talking to them about what was happening in that time frame. And we know back in certain times that protests and different conflicts were at their highest. And so I don't know, I didn't live back then, but I would like to think the grownups include the kids in certain conversations, especially when it came to race relations. And it's like now we're, as you all mentioned, we're pulling away from that. Just because we think we're living in a space where everything is good, we kind of get along there's no need for certain conversations. Do you feel that that's kind of where we're losing or we lost well, some of the know, generation? I, I'm not sure how to answer that. I, I just, I will answer the best way I know how. Okay. Uh, we don't really talk with each other anymore. You know, we talk to each other. Uh, we con each other. You know, uh, back in the day, we. we if, if whether you understand this or not, we had strong black parents. Even though mine didn't physically raise me, I was raised out the street. But all the children I knew, uh, cousins, in-laws, whatever, we had strong black people then. And they stood up no matter what. Even if the popo was beating them upside the head or they couldn't get on the bus, we had strong black people then. You know, I don't see that strongness anymore. Uh, I, I just don't. I mean, maybe let them come and see it, but I just don't see that, that strong. Uh, let's get together and let's, let's, let's march together. It shouldn't be ha that you, that you, somebody has to come and get you to march behind something wrong. You ought to be ready to march if something is wrong. You know, you should always have it in the back of your spirit that if it's time to do something. But at the same time, what has probably changed for me is that, that our leadership has become what I call semi-stupid, you know, uh, from the black perspective, you know, it's, it's just that simple. They, it's, it, they, it's all like, they get so much like the other people that they talk about. They want to con us. They want us to do things. If I do something for you, I want you to do something for me. I'm still not used to that. Uh, my wife keeps saying I'm, I'm, I'm probably bolder than most people because I just say what, what's really out there. You know, bottom line, you have people come and talk to you about politics and stuff like that. And you can tell when they're talking to you that they're conning you, you know, mm -hmm. that they want something out of it or they want you to support them. They want you to do certain things. And I've gotten so used to that, that, you know, I just give them the, the dialogue they want, <laughs> you know, because wow. wow. I know what I'm going to do. Yeah. And I don't know what you're going to do. But yeah. the strongness in the people, and it wasn't just the people in the church, by the way. So I don't want to put the the, 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 the church people in a, in a particular point down because I'm a minister myself. But everybody I knew when I was here was strong. And they didn't take as much as people thought they took mm. from the white people. Mm. Don't, don't, don't get that twisted. I want to make sure that, you know, like I told you later, don't get your panties twisted behind stupidity. <laughs> Okay, mm. because they didn't take as much as you you thought that they that they that they took, you know, from different people. They stood up and, and they did what they were supposed to do. But let's also just be honest. One reason we have the biggest problem we have because we were told the greatest lie in history. Our history is wrong. Uh, I remember mm -hmm. doing a civil civil war uh, thing in in my school when I was a young young kid, but, you know, in the ninth grade. And the history that I read, I knew something was wrong with it. Nobody told me that it was something in my spirit that something is wrong with this history. What I happened, happened to be, be grown and went to Boston one time. If you ever go to Boston, take that Freedom Trail. That's Austin Freedom Trail. But also take that tour. And the first thing this guy said to me, not to me, I think I lied back to the whole group, that this guy, Paul Revere, Mm -hmm. didn't, do, didn't do. Paul was, Revere was in jail. He didn't go tell nobody about the British was coming. Mm -hmm. It was another person I did, and I said, "Well, isn't that amazing? 
I have to almost get almost gone, and I knew that the history books were lying in the first place, but then you're going to tell me Paul Revere was in jail, and somebody else went to told the Paul Revere. <laughs> so you know, I, I, from, the, from the beginning, we've been, been told a lie from the beginning. You know, not saying that everybody believed that, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to hear lies from the outside, then sometimes the lies go home with you. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then it makes you change. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not sure I answered your, your question, but we've been told a lie from the day we were born. Okay, and if you if you don't understand that, then maybe you need to go look in the mirror. You 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 know I've I've learned some things uh, too, uh, Dr. Coleman, about uh, the history uh, that we were taught in school. Uh, and and uh, elementary to high school were different from some of the things I've learned in college, and uh, and you know I, I I give thanks to all to God for uh, Doctor uh, uh, Doctor Smith, uh, Calvin Smith. I took several uh, Black History classes underneath him, and I saw some things that I, I and I've discovered some things that I never uh, knew about, and then. I had the blessed opportunity to travel uh, in the year 2001. I had to travel to West Africa, to Gambia and Senegal, Senegal there. And, and what I've learned uh, there, when I came there, uh, I was just, uh, my heart was uh, uh, just, just broken and, my, and uh, you know, just wounded, I guess, because of, of some of the things I didn't know. Uh, uh, and then when you study history, uh, you start researching, you'll find out that a lot of the history that we were taught uh, was wrong. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and now you're, you're, you're having to go back and almost, if I can say this, re try to re-educate uh, uh, people and let them know that of their rich heritage that, uh, that we have as African-American people. And I think it's so important that we we get the we have the truth uh and when we know the truth and we know uh that we were you know as as the uh, african-american uh people we 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 were a strong uh we are and still are a strong people it's just that we we've we just veered away and we we just take um uh, we just take whatever information somebody give us and not really sometimes uh, uh, investigate and try to see whether or not uh, it, all of it's true. Um, Paul, Paul, uh, the, actually in Acts, it talks about the uh, uh, church and uh, 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 says that uh, I believe in the city of B Berea, I believe it was, uh, when Paul came and talked to them about the, the, the preaching the gospel, the Bible said they searched the scripture <laughs> to see whether or not what he said was true. And so, uh, so I believe sometimes it's good that we search out and, and find out what our true heritage is, and um, that it goes and it has a rich heritage. That we we were not just slaves, but we were we were strong uh, 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 men uh, of God, men that was uh, that were made. And I have a book here that's uh, uh, you know just just reading from that, and uh, and and I saw that. Uh, Hey, uh, uh, we've got some of our history wrong. So when we have your history wrong, then you have, then, then if you start out wrong, you're going to end up in the wrong way. Yeah. <laughs> but if you start out, but if when you, but you find out true history and who, who you are uh, and whose you are, and then where you came from, it, it, it gives a whole lot of credence to where I'm at now and what I can do. And so, um, and, 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 and just the same, you know, it, it is in, in Christian and, and, and the body of Christ is if we don't know who we are and whose we are and what our potential is, then we will settle for less. Yes. And so, uh, uh, you, know, you know, wisdom, uh, knowledge, is, knowledge is powerful. And, 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 and that's why it's so very important that we share this knowledge and 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 get our young people to see that uh you have a rich heritage and go back and and search out 
so you will know who you are. Don't lose your identity. Uh, uh, don't lose your heritage. Uh, but as Dr. Coleman said, but we all came from God. So right. that's where we can get out. That's where we get it at when we can't know that we were, came from God and then God loves us just as much as any other person. I have a comment. We have a comment on Facebook. Um, one second. Welcome back to the people on air. We had to cut off because I didn't want to interrupt you all, but we we're back on air. We were still live on Facebook. So everyone on Facebook got this wonderful, the wonderful messages you all were giving. Um, we have a comment from Ms. Karen McKinney. Um, and good morning to Mr. Heron Burrell. She says, I did not live in this country at the time. However, observing from an outsider, we have to come together. I am from Europe and trust me, we have our problems. My family fought in the resistance, causing me to grow up with much resentment towards Germans. I, have to, I had to make a conscious decision to change my thoughts. The current generation had nothing to do with what happened in the previous generation. There are many other wars and issues Europe has. I am from Denmark, direct descendant from the Vikings. Trust me, we weren't angels. We fought everyone for, for centuries. Um, capture people, help slaves, etc. cetera. Um, so she, I guess she's saying she understands some of the history and how it's all, it could be wrong. <laughs> uh, we're taught one thing when it's really another. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, there's another issue that's, you know, been debated. I'm not even getting into that. Um, when it comes to history, there are different mm -hmm. issues coming up in different, um, I don't know if it's made to the federal level, but I know on the state, uh, different states are now discussing uh, changing, adopting an addendum to the curriculum to teach children the correct history or insert yeah. more of the missing pieces. Now, concerning that, uh, I wanna get back to the legacy building aspect and how we in the black community, what can we do? Um, whether people go to church or not, but the black family, the black community, the black village, what can we do to start snatching back our people and in, in planting, instilling, empowering our people in, with these thoughts and knowledge? Well, the first thing I think we need to stop hating each other. I mean, I'm just sorry. Yeah, you know, you, you want it laid out, I'm laying it out. Mm -hmm. Stop hating each other, you know. Quit, as the old folks we say, quit shuffling jive. You know, when you talk to a person, talk with the person, tell the truth to a person. You know, uh, if you, if you, if you know, it's kind of like lately, most people have come to me, come, you know, I, you know I'm, I'm a street person. You know, I, I'm sorry, I was raised in the streets. I just became a minister because God allowed it. But I'm a street person <laughs> and I still think street. And I, I can tell when you con at me, I can tell when you come with that crap, you know, it's just, it's just bottom line, stop lying to each other, stop putting each other down. And if somebody's doing something, pat them on the back. You know, you don't have to be part of what they're doing, but, you know, encourage them. You know, we have stopped encouraging each other. Uh, that's another thing about it. We, we don't encourage each other. If we see somebody doing something, we're always trying to get ahead of somebody. Well, if you already know you back to something, uh, Reverend Connor said, if you know who you are, you don't have to get ahead of anybody. Mm. You know, you don't. Mm. I mean, if you know who you are, you, if you feel free, it's like uh, I've said all the time, and people maybe get tired of hearing it, but, you know, in my head, I'm free. Uh, that's probably why I don't take a lot of stuff in this community and, and deal with a lot of people. I say what I have to say. I'm learning, by the way, how to say things, not see them like I say them on the street. My wife has taught me how to be a little bit more courteous in my conversation. <laughs> but but I, and I have to tell her to chill out. <laughs> you know, because she wasn't raised in the hood like I was raised in the hood. And some, of the, some of the sweet words that she used, I don't know. I don't know anything about them. You know, uh, I, 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 I call a rat a rat. <laughs> you know, you don't make us a rat. You know, you, you call them a rat. You know, but I think if we did more respect to each other, uh, we'd have more conversation and have more conversation about what we can do with each other, not what we can do to each other. And if you don't want to participate in a certain thing, just be honest. I, I just don't want to deal with it. You know, bottom line, and and not not putting the person down. You know, you talk to a person to their face and. And then next thing you know, like I tell most people, you know, if you got something to say to me, I can say it to you. 
and and I can go knock on your door. I'm still old school. I can go knock on your door and tell you what I got to tell you. You know, and if you tell allow me, I'm going to come looking for you. <laughs> you know, and I want to tell you why. And then the person mm -hmm. that bought me the lie, I'm going to bring them with me. So I want to get this stuff. <laughs> you know, people say, well, that's, that's way too bold. That's old school. Well, guess what? I'm going to be old school till I die. Mm -hmm. I ain't getting no younger, by the way. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, I, one, of the, one of the things that I believe that can help us uh, begin to uh, come together is it, it, it's that we can change this. We come together, and I like what Dr. Coleman said. We first, we have we respect for ourselves. Okay. If we love ourselves, we, uh, uh, the, the, and I, the scripture says, uh, love God and love your neighbor as yourself. Okay. So if I don't love myself, if I disrespect myself, then I would disrespect you. So I believe that's where we have to learn to respect ourselves. Uh, be, uh, how would you say this? Thank God for who you are. Mm -hmm. uh, and thank God for who you are. Mm -hmm. And see yourself as, as, a, as, a, as a creator, as uh, being created by Almighty God. The Bible said we're fearfully and wonderfully made. And when we... Uh, first get that image of us who we are then I learn to respect who I then I learn to respect you and 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 then once I respect you then I'm able to talk with you yeah. and because I re have respect for you yeah. but if I don't respect myself if I do myself wrong I sure gonna do you wrong because I don't have no respect for you so I believe it's learning to have respect for yourself uh we're starting with and 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 as a minister, I have to say this, God first and me, when I see what, that I'm, I'm beautiful and wonderful made of God, I'm, a, I'm, I'm uniquely wonderful made, I am the, uh, I'm his child, and then when I gain that sense of, of awareness of that and who I am, and then now I can respect you, and now that we can respect each other, that's where, the, that's where, we, that's where we start out. Uh, what it says, uh, how can two walk together except they come into agreement? And so when we come into that, uh, the agreement is, I, and I can learn, I think the other problem is we learn that if we have differences, uh, we can still respect you. You know, if you have a different, uh, uh, added, you know, if you have a different uh, uh, way of seeing things, and we do, uh, I, I learn still to respect you because that's, that's how you see it. And so once we start there, I believe that's the groundwork for, for a better relationship uh, for us working together is, uh, and then like the Dr. Coleman had, had made mention, and, and instead of us always trying to uh, uh, play games with each other, let's be honest, let's, let's be straightforward. And, and then we can know, uh, I can know what, if I know you, and if I know myself, and you know yourself, and we put it, uh, come to the table. It's not a, it, uh, we're, we're trying to do this because we're wanting to work together. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the first place we need to start is learn to respect ourselves. And as we learn to respect ourselves, then we learn to respect each other. And once we've learned, begin to learn to respect each other, then we can move forward. You know, well, uh, uh, a lot of people ask me, uh, you know, how do you do things that you do uh, first? First thing I learned years ago on the streets, I, I don't need a crowd to do what I do. You know, I just do what I'm going to do. Too. You know, uh, I, I think in, in, in the realm from a spiritual perspective that uh, uh, once again, God has made me. And he thought so much of me to make me like I am. So there's nobody like me. Boy, isn't, isn't that a wonderful feeling that nobody? <laughs> yeah. And of course, my wife is totally glad that there's nobody. Else. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But isn't that a wonderful thing that 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 you are so uniquely, so you uniquely yeah. made, and mm -hmm. your personality is so unique, man. That ought, that ought to make you just happy all by yourself, instead of worrying about somebody else being happy for you. And to me, that that kind of spirit allows me to just to do what I think is right. Because I remember the times I did nothing right. 
you know, some people don't admit their, their shame, but I admit mine. I remember I did absolutely nothing right, and now I got a chance to do right. But more importantly than doing right for me, doing right for the people. That's probably one of my number one key things in my life is trying to really serve. Don't serve because you have a position or because you were elected in a position. I was serving before I got this position. I think that's one reason I was picked to be put in this position, but you know, I love serving people, but serving people don't mean I'm gonna kiss you. I don't, I'm gonna say the other part of it. I'll be, I'll be nice today. You know, certain people don't mean I'm gonna kiss you now. You know, and you know what I mean? Y'all can smile because you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know, so sometimes I have to tell you, you know, uh, you know, I'm not going to be bothered with you. I'm not going to put up with you. But back to the uniqueness, I guess the bottom line for me to say to close part of this is that, man, when I, when I found out how gracious God was that, that looked down and created me, uh, it just, it's an awesome thing. And I think if everybody get up in the morning and say, oh man, thank God that I'm, I, I am somebody. Mm -hmm. That word did just have to come out. That word came out when I was a kid. I am somebody. Yeah. You know? yeah. And not because you want me to be somebody. I am because God looked down and said, I'm going to make Charles Scoville what he is. Man, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, that's it. I want to uh, say the yeah, one thing ahead. that I'm getting, I'm sorry. The one thing that I'm getting from y'all that I really appreciate is that, and I know in my at my age, it's not that this is new to me. It doesn't hurt to help it, to keep getting it reinstilled in me that I have a purpose. I was created on purpose with the purpose for a purpose. I and I have a duty and responsibility to my community, my family, my church, whatever entity I serve in. And I don't take that lightly. Um, which is why I want to have this conversation to hopefully Wonderful. put something on the heart of someone else that's listening. Um, I struggled for a while with, and I know Dr. Coleman is going to beat me sideways with, for this. I struggled with my blackness for a while because wow. I grew up in different areas. And so um, just struggling where I fit in. And then we have this thing in our black culture of colorism. If you're a certain shade, you know, mm -hmm. your view different. That needs to be eradicated as well. Absolutely. So it doesn't matter what shade you fall in this color rainbow of the spectrum, light, mm -hmm. dark, in between. We're all black. We all have a purpose. We all have a responsibility. And we all can fulfill those roles. Anyway, but it took me till I got over to my 30s. I'm past that now, but until I just really began to be rooted and who I am and, you know, what I can do, yeah. what I'm capable of. And now that I'm over 40, you all better watch out. Cause <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, happen. one of the things that helped me, uh, I, I have to admit this, uh, and, it's, and I don't mind admitting it to the, to the whole world, that having a relationship with Jesus really allowed me to take off. I'm serious. It actually allowed, because one of the things that I found out that even most Christians and I said, I mean, it's in a sincere way, so I'm not putting anybody down. They didn't understand, and they still don't understand, that it's all about who you are in God's purpose, not mm -hmm. just your purpose, right. but God's purpose. So mm -hmm. doing what you're doing, Cleva, you know, uh, I, I, I didn't even know you when I met you. And I had a lot of respect for you. I mean, just watch the way you walk, the way you talk. And, and you were, believe it or not, an, an uplift to me. I, I've said this to your face before, so it's not just on the TV and the radio. Now, you've already heard me say this to you a long time ago when I first met you. So I knew you were somebody when I met you. Mm -hmm. I didn't look for you to be somebody, but at the same time, I will tell you, I will tell Colin, I will tell this whole world, it's all about God's purpose in you. So mm. if you can feel something in you, don't worry about what Dr. Cole would say, <laughs> you know. Or what Reverend Connor, anybody else say, you a little boy say, get on with it. <laughs> yeah. and, 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 I mean, I'm telling I like you, that. That's the, <laughs> hey, get on with it. And that's the way I feel. That's why I don't, I don't worry about when I do things or try to do things in the community. I, I don't worry about hip or patting somebody or you come and hit me. And, and, and God, God has made me successful. It has nothing to do with me. It has something to do with who God has worked in me to make me. So Regardless, if I were just getting up in the morning going to Mickey D's, I'm still successful. Mm -hmm. 
because God made peace. And, and, and I think that's one of the problems we have also while we don't get along with. We try to please each other instead of pleasing God. Yeah. yeah. And when you yeah. start to please each other, that ain't going to work. That's right. Because we something else, brother, big time. Yeah. Is I talk to my wife, us is it's us. Is. We, we, are, we are something else there. Yeah. Bottom yeah. line. So yeah. I learned to try to just please him as much as I know how. And I'm still learning. It's still a progress. I'm still a, a, a teenager in my mind, learning to love God, learning to be in the process of being what he wants me to be. So that helps me not get up thinking about you, Cabela. Don't get me wrong. That helps me get up in the morning. I think about you, Reverend Colin. That gets mm -hmm. me up in the morning praying, what do you want me to do today, Lord? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who do you want me to talk to? Who yeah. do you want me? And then sometimes God tells me, just shut up. Mm -hmm. You know, just keep your mouth shut. Mm -hmm. That's hard to do. But, you know, <laughs> sometimes, you know, it's kind of like that script in James 119, you know, be quick to hear. And and slow to speak. speak. Slow to yep. speak and slow to laugh. So if yes, nothing, he has to tell me in certain places, maybe not on this program since you asked me to be on this morning, <laughs> I don't have to be quiet. You know, but there's times yes, in certain places he is saying, I made you, I created you, you're here for my purpose. Don't worry about what other people think about you. You need to be looking at what I, because I can get rid of you and other people. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, Rick Warren, uh, uh, I'm sure you heard of that, wrote this book, uh, Purpose yeah. Driven Life. Purpose -driven. And I mm -hmm. think that's where, uh, uh, what we have to uh, be aware of, my life should be purpose driven. It's not what, uh, and, and what we've done is, as, a, as a whole is, uh, we've kind of looked at, uh, if I can use this, uh, entertainers and other things and stars, uh, we're trying to, you know, I'm not, well, I can use it. We're trying to, we were trying to be like Mike. We're trying to be like, we're wearing everybody, we're wearing name brand things thinking it's going to make us, but we're wearing somebody else's name. Yeah, but when will we, when will we uh, just, just uh, make the decision as, you know what, I am, as again, we say, I, am, I was created by God. Before I came here, he knew me and had a purpose for my life uh, for already. So when I find my purpose and come driven by my purpose, then I will, I, I will succeed. It may not be what you think. Amen. But I'll succeed at what God called for me to do, and when and at the and they say at the end of the road, that's what it's all about. Yeah. It's about being purpose driven, driven. What it, and I, uh, Dr. Coleman, you said the same thing. I've been ministering on too. Every day, God has purpose. Every day I, we wake up in the morning, there is something today that I'm supposed to do today. There's a person that I'm supposed to be connected to. There's something in life. Somebody mm -hmm. that I need to 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 help today. What is it, God? And if I spend that time, I, I notice what Jesus did. He uh uh, uh it's, it is said that Jesus spent the first five hours of the morning in prayer, an average of five hours in the morning. His 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 idea was, and he and he said this, uh, and his whole thing was, I must do the Father's will. Mm -hmm. He was in drenched with that. And that was his whole committal. So I believe when we kind of uh, we get that same uh, a mindset is what am I what am I here for? I've I, 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 I'm not here just to cumber the ground. I'm not here just for nothing. Uh, God is a productive person. <laughs> so Absolutely. if we want to, so when we don't do what we spoke do, we're non productive, and um, and we're not, and so we're not. And so that makes us a uh, uh, liability. So I say uh, that when we learn purpose, who am I? And then when I've learned, when I feel good about myself, then I, again, I repeat, when I feel good and satisfied about myself, then I can love somebody else. It makes it easy when, when you, to me, when you look at it from that perspective, mm -hmm. it makes it easy. It, it makes you smile. I, I remember years ago, when even on the street, I didn't smile a lot. Because I was always angry. I was angry every day, you know, because uh, I had to hustle. I had to, uh, well, you know, on the streets, those that really know the truth, that you have to really survive. And, and really on the streets, you couldn't trust anybody. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. so I've had to, I've, right. I've had, my whole life has had to totally train around to trust. But I trust in God to trust me 
to trust somebody else, not yeah. my own faculties. And so uh, that's not a religious statement. That's a Christian statement. You know, you have to be led by God to do the things that you do. And some people, uh, like I tell people, you know, uh, at, the, at the church that I teach at most of the time, I tell them all the time, you know, when you, when, when anybody can go to church, and, and, and one of the things that people don't like to hear, but it's, you know, God created everybody, but everybody doesn't belong to God. <laughs> you only belong to God when you accept Jesus. And yeah. that's why a lot of people have a lot of trouble in church because they go to church and they know God, but they, have, they don't have a relationship with Jesus. So it's hard to have a communication that you really need. But for the purpose of trying to do what you're supposed to do, it took me, it didn't take me long to understand that I cannot please Quebec. I cannot, no way, form. She's always going to have just a little something different in her head because she is different. Yeah. And that's a good creation. Well, seriously, mm -hmm. not a negative statement. It's a good thing because she is who she is. Yeah. Only who you are. So the best thing I better do is close as I can is please God and not worry about you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's yes, good. Sir. Um, Mr. Derek Coleman um, wants to invite you gentlemen to um, there is a community outreach cookout at the Revenue Wellen Park um, on Saturday, June 26th uh, from one to five. And he's inviting you all to come out if you would like to speak for about 15 minutes. Um, he, Derek Holman has been working hard for these past few weeks trying to get people together and get them involved and engaged, which is another way we can continue to build upon our legacy as black people. Um, I know we didn't get into the politics, not too deep. That's another thing. Um, and again, this I was before politics. my time. <laughs> this was before my time, but I like to do my reading and research. Um, the church was one of those was the cornerstone of mm -hmm. the black community, yeah. and mm -hmm. a lot of information filtered through the church and then to the families and to the community. And it's like I understand not everyone goes to church. But even some of those that were not avid church goers, if there was a meeting or some of some kind, they went to the church building for that meeting to get that information. And it's like, we've gotten away from how we distribute information and how we communicate and gather things of that nature. And well, that's well, what I'm just, saying. I just made a statement a few minutes ago and the statement is bigger than, than you and I mm -hmm. and Dr. Uh, uh, that we're talking with. And let me tell you why it's bigger. Because those folk that we are talking about in our past, they knew Jesus. Mm. Okay? And, and, and I'll say it again. Once you have a relation with him, with, with Jesus, then those things, the old thing that we call old school, are not really old school because Jesus hadn't changed, God had to change. Am I making myself clear? Okay. Mm -hmm. So we would be we would, we would be transparent to give out that information. So uh, this is a hard statement, and I'm sure I won't get a lot of rebuttal, but like I say, I live 300 on fish and I ain't gonna lose no sleep over nobody. Until we understand that relationship will make us get closer. But when we just doing things on our own and thinking God told us to do that without asking God, what is your purpose? Uh, I don't put people down when they when they want to do something different, but I'm thinking, is it for you or is it for God's purpose? Because God's purpose has a multifaceted pro pro product in it. The multifaceted product is saying that you are a servant. You're not looking to be served. You're looking to serve. Uh, mm. I interrupted you a while ago and made a statement. I hate politics. I hate it with a passion. People say, well, but you're in politics. Well, yeah, I'm in politics because I was chosen by the people even before I got into being a city council. Well, you know that when I first ran, I didn't run because I wanted to run. I was, drove me nuts to rain, not rain. But I hate it because I don't like liars. I don't like people that connive. And I definitely don't like people that manipulate the public, manipulate the community. You know, uh, we, we have a system now and it's bothering me right now. And don't think I haven't been playing on it, you know. And so guess what? The only thing I can do is go to God and say, what do you want me to do about it? Not mm -hmm. what I want Bella to do about it. What I want Reverend Collins to do. What do you want to do? Uh, mm -hmm. Back to uh, Eric, he, he, he had talked to me and I said I'd be there. But, you know, I got, uh, I'm actually going to plug this now. I got uh, community cleanup on, on Saturday. 
uh, from 8 to 12. I got also uh, Johnson & Johnson shots we're going to be giving out uh, at 315 hours. And so I'm going to, because I'm not a liar, I'm going to make, I'm going to take away from time to go say one or two words and hopefully make them happy. If I don't, I ain't going to lose no sleep over that either. You know, but I'm a busy person, you know, bottom yeah. line. But I'm not busy because I want to be busy. You made a statement a while ago, Quibella, and, and it's so true. And Reverend Connie, you said the same thing. When you have a purpose, I think you better be doing what God wants you to do, not what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Because okay. I, guarantee, I guarantee once you do what you want to do, don't think it you're not going to fail in some kind of way. But mm -hmm. if you do what God wants you to do, it's kind of like a, a, a political statement I made to a certain person, I made to several people. If you run for a position, if you lose, you win. And if you win, you win. And the guy said, wait a minute, that's crazy. No, that's not crazy. Because sometimes God puts you out there just for you to give out information. Mm -hmm. He didn't tell you to win nothing. The <laughs> people will pick you if you allow that. And don't ever think in your life that when you get a position, God didn't ordain it because he is still in control. Right. That's why I never worried about the president, whoever became president, I never worried about it Be because, because I know God is still in control. That's mm -hmm. hard. And even when you talk to some Christians, that's hard for them. Wait a minute, wait a minute. God didn't put that man in that, in that place. <laughs> nothing happens without God's okay. Even <laughs> Satan can't kick you in the butt until he talks to Jesus. <laughs> Come on, so you, you, yes, want, you, you want to get religious? I can get religious with you. And I yeah. can get Christian with you. you yeah. He cannot even hurt you unless God allows it. Maybe I'm the biggest fool when it comes to the Bible, but I learned that hard way, and I still believe that nothing happens with God's okay. So yes. if you think you're doing something because your name is Charles Coleman or whatever, I'm sorry. It ain't that ain't it. God has said, okay, I'm gonna let this idiot go as far as I want, and then when I give it a stop him, I'll stop. All right, I would like, so you know, we're our last segment, so we could just wrap up. Yeah, about, yeah, go ahead. About three to five minutes. <laughs> go ahead. You know, I was gonna say, uh, uh, sometimes with you know, many times we we'll go back to the thing that we talked about purpose. When we know what, when we know what, what we are called to do. And then I, I believe sometimes when we go out in, in community and we, you know, sometimes we expect big crowds and great things happen. Right. Um, the Bible says this, despise not the small beginnings. Mm -hmm. And so we, we judge success upon how, how many came, but success <laughs> is not how many came. Success is, did somebody, what's that old song? If if I can just touch a, a one somebody yeah. along this way, then my living is not in vain. Amen. So if I'm called to do something uh, and everybody doesn't agree with me, I've done come and do what I want him to do, uh, then I had to, uh, and if I go ahead and do it, then I'm successful. If one person showed or 1,000 showed, I'm successful because it must be been uh, because God because that if one person just get the message, then that one can reach out. You one can, what's that word? One can change the thousand. Uh huh. And 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 the process goes on. Uh, tell me when my time is up. But I remember this story is in the Bible about this man. He was coming. Uh, he was uh, uh, by in chapter Acts. It talk, in Acts it talked about he was a treasure of the queen. God tells uh, 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 Philip to lead the revival and go and preach to that one man. He goes and preaches to that one man, but that one man knows, get, get baptized, he goes and saves a nation. <laughs> <laughs> so you would say, why would leave, Philip leave a revival and go preach to one man? Because God knew that that one man would, take, would, chase, would touch a nation. Amen. So I think if when we look at it from that perspective, we won't say, well, I, ain't, I don't see as many. Hey, it's not all the numbers that count. It's, <laughs> it's, it's what's purpose and, and doing and, and being in God's purpose that really matters the most. All right. So we're down to our last two minutes. Dr. Coleman, would you like to take us out? Well, I'm just thankful to, to be on the program, but I'm thankful that 
that we're talking about something that's doable in the community, trying to respect one another, trying to mm -hmm. do better, trying to understand your purpose. Uh, and like I tell these people I'm teaching, don't ask me what God wants you to be. Ask God what you, he wants you to be. <laughs> Sometimes I want to tell you to sit down and go somewhere. But, you know, uh, but I think God is the one that you ask uh, uh, all yes, the questions. Uh, you listen to hopefully that the inspiration of spirituality that he puts through us, but your main focus is to ask him what does he want you to be, not mm -hmm. what Charles Coleman or the community wants you to be. And I think that would make you a lot more successful. And then at the same time, ending, love yourself. If you love yourself, I guarantee you love somebody else. But if you have a problem with your hair or your face or your color, you know, we have multicolors and boy, that is so wonderful. And so, you know, it's like I tell my wife, you know, I get up in the morning looking good all the time. So I don't lose no sleep over that. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. I just want to thank you, gentlemen, for giving me your time for speaking to the community. And I hope that you can make it out on June 26th um, to speak again, or at least just be present in the community. And thank you for your service. Um, I wanna ask uh, Reverend Kelly, how long, how many years has Miller Temple served the community? Uh, 100 years. Wow. Yeah, well, matter of fact, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, last year we celebrated 100 and this is year 102. Uh, that is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, it is. And that's great. And, and mm -hmm. how many years have you served Jonesboro, um, Dr. Coleman? I've been uh, serving Jonesboro really right now, a total of between uh, being a professor at Arkansas State University, 28 years. That's uh, amazing. Been, been on the council 12 years and, and looking forward to moving on. Yeah. Well, I pray that God gives, God may not give me 100, but I pray God gives me many years to serve this I pray community. to give you too. I thank you a wonderful person Quilla. yes sir I I'll, about, about that. you have a you have a one an outward personality that that is really unique thank you and I thank you gentlemen for being here and thank you all of my listeners and followers uh thank you for joining us and don't forget today is all gospel Wednesday so stay tuned for uh the gospel music with Brother the Cobbs at 11 o'clock and get your praise and worship on and find your purpose and let's continue to build this legacy in the Black community. Preparation is the key to survival. Um, so thank you all, and I hope you have a great and blessed day. Thank you. You too. God bless you. Mm -hmm.